Hello and welcome back to another episode of Open Air Atheist. Today I'm going to be addressing, addressing some comments uh, that were left about my videos. Some of these are uh, from reformedevangelist.com and from one of their associates. So let's get started. Uh, James, you watched a couple of debates and listened to a few CDs and now you're an expert. I never claimed to be. Uh, I listened to how you reasoned, James, you are still like a little child and you don't know how to reason properly the drugs you took he put AR which was supposed to be at at a young age have corrupted and retarded your development and your spirit is dead what's a what a sickening shame so man made logic something immutable question mark um no actually i did more than that um i actually took some philosophy a philosophy course and a course on logic you can too if you go on the internet uh, go on Oxford and you can take some of Marianne Talbot's uh, watch her lectures and and um, classes um, I also studied Greek as I'm sure you're well aware uh, I studied New Testament Greek and church history uh, so all up in your grizzle no I'm just kidding um, so I mean that's just the way it is. You really don't know what you're talking about. I could argue that um, you took drugs at a young age and, and that affects your typing. I mean, who, who the hell cares? Okay, this video is not as surprising as you suppose. It actually answers many convictions we had. I am glad to see you have a place to stay throughout the winter. Unfortunately, it is at the expense of your eternity. Uh, really, having a place to stay throughout the winter is at the expense of my eternity, so somehow there's a ought in the Bible that says, uh, or should not, or something in there somewhere that says that it's a sin to have a place to stay throughout the winter. I, I didn't quite get that comment. Um, all things shall come into light. That's great. That was from reformedevangelist.com, uh, by the way. Uh, other than his brother, Paul, uh, Paul Kaiser. <sighs> okay, let's go. But your behavior testifies to the fact that you do not that you do know the, the God of the Bible, and even your self deception cannot hide it. This is seen by your continual demand to be rational and moral, when in fact these rational and moral obligations do not make sense apart from a Christian understanding of reality. I would exhort you to repent of your atheism, turn away from your sin and turn to Christ that you may be saved from the wrath to come. Well, uh, that's great. I would, I would exhort you to uh, live a moral life between now and Christmas, otherwise Santa won't leave you uh, Christmas presents under your tree. Um, see, from a Christian perspective, morality makes uh, sense. This is because it derives from the commandments of God. You know the Bible, this uh, this Bible says that, uh, but you suppress the truth in unrighteousness, uh, Romans 1, 18 through 23. Yes, actually, I'm very familiar with that passage, and I can actually read it in the Greek. How about you? Um, actually, um, <clears throat> uh, you're right. Um, hey, we get our sense of morality from the commandments of God. So we should go back to the Old Testament where they stoned people uh, for disobeying their parents. Uh, or how about um, where we stone people for picking up sticks on the Sabbath? Of course, you're going to say, well, that's great. That's just your personal opinion. How can you judge God when you have no standpoint in which to have to account for morality? Um, that's great. But that can be explained in other ways. Um, okay. Uh, atheism cannot answer the questions. Intelligibility without anything. Uh, Christianity is true. This is, I'm assuming, the golden rule you speak of in another shoe, uh, being in another's shoes. That is what Jesus taught that people uh, want to be treated, uh, to treat people the way you want to be treated. Jesus said to love your neighbors yourself. Actually, there is another moral teacher who taught the same before Jesus, uh, phrased it a little differently. Uh, but basically the same thing, so no, he did not come up with this. Um, you have, uh, by the way, that's from Random Theology, other known as Brother R.C. or Ryan Dozier, one of the fellow, uh, one of the open-air preachers on ReformedVangelist.com. 
you have not addressed the origin of morality, you need to uh, address the metaphysical foundation for morality. What is the foundation for morality? It cannot be empathy or knowledge. Empathy cannot tell us why something is morally wrong. Uh, all it can do is explain why a person feels bad about a moral action. To say knowledge is where morality comes from uh, is to beg the question, how do we know if something is morally right or wrong? Um, we think something is good or bad because of what society has taught us, because of our parents, uh, the, the values that they have instilled in us. Um, if we had a man, let's do a thought, a thought experiment, a man who was raised in the wild by wolves, um, obviously he wouldn't know that rape was wrong, he wouldn't know that stealing was wrong, because these, these things don't exist in his uh, environment. Uh, wolves aren't really, can, don't have court systems and such. And you can argue, oh, well that makes us uh, created in the image of God. Look, no other being on this planet has court systems. Uh, I, I could say it's because we're more intelligent. Um, but anyways, um, so there are other ways to explain morality other than postulating a deity. Um, also, there's something called altruism. Um, and, you know, I'm sure we both can agree that you don't need a god uh, to be moral, which is why uh, you know, we find debates such as, can there be uh, a reason for morality without God? It's so interesting, and the question, uh, the answer is, Yes, we can. Uh, reason, if you mean that reason, a logical reason, I don't know. Um, but there are other... Um, there are other ways of trying to find out where morality came from than postulating the deity. Um, okay, let's continue. Um... <clears throat> Notice, James, how you want to fight against the living God. Why are you not refuting Zen Buddhism or uh, Muhammad as an inspired prophet? You bring up the same old tired arguments that atheists have uh, that have bringing up, been bringing up for years. Well-studied atheists that debate don't bring these up anymore. Uh, they are easily refuted. You should be uh, spending this time writing to your son and financially supporting him. Ooh, sounds like an appellant an attack, attacking the person rather than the beliefs, uh, which is uh, a logical fallacy. There, uh, that's from uh, that would be from Matthew Schuler, a former Christian friend of mine. Um, <clears throat> Anyways, uh, as far as my son, I don't know how he entered this, uh, this subject. I don't know what he has to do with the Trinity or with me coming out as being an atheist. Uh, for your information, I send him almost $400 a month, uh, send him money out of my own pocket, um, and I write him letters and speak to him quite often. So, uh, and I visit him as much as possible, but I, again, I don't see what the hell this has to do with my YouTube channel. So please, in the future, if you wish to post something, make it be relevant to the subject. Um, <clears throat> why not touch on, uh, Matthew, why not touch on the arguments that I raised? Uh, first of all, these arguments, you said they were atheistic, old atheistic arguments. These were not atheistic arguments. These were posed by Rabbi Tovia Singer, who is a uh, Orthodox Jewish rabbi. Uh, so you don't even know what you're talking about, and why don't you, why don't you try refuting these? Um, this video is coming to a close, so I'm going to have to address it in my next. I'm going to have to continue on, um, and I will address some of these issues. Alrighty then. Peace out.